Hi, Ricksters here, back with another War Thunder video. I'm trying out a new series on called Planes That Are Fastly Underestimated by the Community. For t this particular episode, I'm going to take out the P 47 D 25, which is in rank 3, battle rating 4.3. If you go down the path of the P 36A directly, you can get straight to there a little bit faster than doing a mix mash, which is basically how this game's grind system works. A little quick tidbit about the P-47, at least in this game's physics and lore. It's underestimated because it doesn't climb very fast. And that is also partially correct in real life. However, it is a monster above 3,000 meters. So let's get started. All right, so this match is Kursk. I'm going to do a targeting distance of 500, minimum field load, universal for the belts. Now, this plane is spaded to be fully transparent, and also the pilot is at a high skill level because I have played the US line the most out of all the lines I've played in this game. So the results may vary pilot skill-wise. As with any plane, you want to prioritize G tolerance and stamina, regardless of nation. With that out of the way, you want to start doing what's called a little bit of form of zoom climbing. This uh, player that's green is in my squad. I call him Dwarf. He's flying the Spitfire Mark 9. He'll be covering the low altitude while I go high. That is the plan. Now you want to do in most American planes, not all of them, but a vast majority of the prop ones, you want to do is called side climbing, which basically means if you start at say C7, you go and climb sideways across the map in a dionical pattern. The goal being that once you get towards the center after reaching 3000 or higher in terms of meters height, your plane will be at its best performance. Now, just like in real life, this plane can carry ordnance, but I highly recommend not doing that, especially at the start, because you basically aren't going to climb at all at that point, because it's really heavy to begin with. Later on, if you can't or have the time to climb back up after the match is pretty much foregone conclusion, you can carry quite a lot of ground ordnance with this plane, almost as much as a twin-engine bomber, in fact. But you have to get the upgrades first in order to do so. And f as for climbing in this particular plane, sometimes I'll do is, is put it at zero, gain a little bit of speed to like 200 indicated, then climb up to 15 degrees, assuming that this plane is spaded. The reason being that American planes tend to climb better above 160 miles an hour, unlike other nations such as the Zero or Spitfire that climb better at a little lower speed. And as you can see, now I'm actually gaining altitude a little bit faster because I'm maintaining speed while using web. Right now we're at almost at D5. We are facing off against the Germans, the Russians, Japanese, and the Italians in this one. The allies are Britain and Sweden. Don't mind that because War Thunder doesn't care about what nation historically fought what during the Second World War or post-Cold War. Period. It just doesn't matter. <laughs> it's just the way they balance the game, or try to. Right now we're at 2700, so we're almost at the minimum recommended altitude for this plane. The reason being that the higher you go, the better this plane generally performs because of that massive turbocharger. That's why it's so big and thick. And that's why it's also so heavy. Because they had to cram that into an airframe, and it was really big. <laughs> Like, if you take a look at one of these on a Google picture or Wikipedia of some sort, they're massive, and that's why they're so heavy. It's also really good at a dive, too. Not initially, but once you start, like, descending a little bit, it just picks up speed like crazy. Right now we're still climbing above 160, so we're doing a good climb here. We're at 3,600 meters. Eventually, uh, my squad mate Dorf here 
will eventually cease climbing because if he gets above 4,000, the Spitfire Mark IX is going to start suffering in performance. As he's turning on his smoke to denote that he's reaching his limit of altitude, because once he gets above 4,000, he loses a lot of power because it's not designed to fight beyond 4,000 meters originally. Alright, I'm at 4,100 meters. I'm going to climb towards the fight now, so I'm going to lower down the nose to zero degrees by changing view, just like that. And I do a slow turn while climbing a little bit. Not very really recommended at low speeds in the Thunderbolt, but I'm familiar with it, so you can I can do that safely. If you're doing that with an unspaded uh, Thunderbolt, be careful at low speeds when you do that motion with the mouse, you can sometimes cause the plane to jerk around and lose precious speed. So now we head towards the fight, climbing at 10 degrees with wet one. And like I said, the higher you go, the better this plane performs. It's all about the turbocharger, baby. So there's a J2M slightly below, I'm going 208 indicated, which basically means how much the air is performing on the wing. The speed is how fast I'm going compared to ground level. You basically fly on indicated for the most part, and my squad mate is engaging them. I'm going to turn around and try to dive on him. Alright, he's diving too much, so I don't want to risk that. He's going to go back around and shoots him down. Well done. That's what teamwork does. And sometimes people will underestimate the Thunderbolt because they say, Oh look, it's a fat point, it's easy kill, Ugh. and they all go after you. So sometimes you are a marked person in this game, when you play this plane in particular. Just like this 109 that's trying to climb up after me. Or this Yak-9, for example. The Act 9 t is really trying though. Want to be careful there. Don't want to give him too easy of a shot. Definitely don't want him to get, get an easy shot here. Or the PE-8 for that matter. And once you're above 200 miles an hour, the P P-47, I'm still used to saying P-38, actually rolls pretty good. You just have to be above 200, though. If you're below that, forget it. It's going to start being really sluggish. It's just the way it works. So now I can turn around, and Dorf is now engaging the Yak, and now I can dive back down into him. Alright, let's see here. They're going to the deck. They want to lose all my speed. Okay, so that bomber's tempting, but the priority is the fighters. Not the uh, bomber. That could wait. So let's dive down. As you can see, this plane picks up speed very quickly. I'm almost hitting 400 indicated, so I actually have to pull back power. I'm trying to get to Dorf in time. Hopefully, I'll make it. Yeah, I don't want to go too fast, so I want to do some crazy maneuvering here. There we go. Shot down the Yak. And what people don't realize, and underestimate too of the P-47, is the fact that it can turn really good at high speeds. That Yak-9 T really wants to be dead though. That's pretty hilarious. So I'm climb back up, do full web, and then do an Immelman, which is basically pitch up, over, and roll above the top. Doing Immelmans in a Thunderbolt is a little bit tricky, especially at a little bit lower speed. I should have been a little bit faster when I did that. Oh god. That Yak killed my squad mate. Shame on me. But there were three people and they are there. There's not much he could have done even if I did that faster. So I'm gonna dive down and try to avenge him. How did they disappear with their good pilot skill? That's Gaijin Physics. The wonders. So this is a 202 I'm diving on, give him some 50 cows of justice, and say, screw that, get this zero, yeah, two down, 
yeah, now we're getting cocky. <laughs> so, another thing that is also overlooked on this plane is the energy retention. This plane retains speed really good. Like, so good in fact, I'm doing a almost 10 degree climb and I only lost a little bit of speed. Now I have to dive back down again because there's a Kai 102. And I don't want to engage or mess with that. And I want to turn towards my base. Because if I don't do that, I'm never going to get any help anyways. And keep the web on because if I don't, well, I'm going to be toast. Ooh. What is this Kai 102 anyways? Gee, my niece. I've never seen that plane in ages. It's a Japanese twin-engine plane. I think that's an interceptor, if I'm not mistaken. So I'm going to start turning, because I'm running out of options here. Normally you don't want to turn in the Thunderbolt, but it's the only move left I can do is force him to overshoot, pop the flaps, and then go head on here in a blaze of glory, because that's all I got left. There we go. Three down. So, the ITP was shot down in the end. We still got him. So, with that, my squad mate Dorf was able to get two, me three, and basically everybody else being the stereotype player, basically doing jackal and doing nothing as usual. So this is the preliminary results of that match. I also want to be transparent here that I am, at this time of the recording, have premium account. So it would have been 11,200. And three with three kills in ARB. If I look at the economics tab or battle tab, it will show me my actual net, which is interim results. So if it was on standard account, it would be about 4,000 to 8,000 on the interim. Actual is probably going to be 6 to 10, and on premium, it would be about 7 to 15, depending on the luck of that match. So the P47D25. It is an underestimated plane in the community, but when deployed right and have good support, like with uh, people like Dorf, it can definitely perform pretty well. As long as you keep your speed up and you're usually above 200, flies great. If you go slow, only do that if you're forcing an overshoot, just like with that Kai 102. Hope you enjoyed this video and possible ongoing series. I'm still experimenting with YouTube and I'm still trying to learn what clicks and what doesn't. I also have a Ko-Fi page if you wish to support the channel. And this is Rickster's Journey, signing off.